This is 5.2 long bone anatomy notes. The essential question is, what structures make up a long bone and what functions do they have in the body? External anatomy of the long bone is made up of two major areas, the diaphysis, which is the shaft of the bone, and then the epiphysis, which is the end portions of the bone. The part portion that is closer to the torso is called the proximal epiphysis, and the portion that is the further away from the torso is called the distal epiphysis. The diaphysis, the outer portion, is made up of compact bone, and the center portion is hollowed out, which is formed by the medullary cavity. There's a hollow part. The epiphysis, or the ends of the bones, are mostly spongy bone, covered by an articular cartilage where it meets another bone. The epiphyseal plate is the junction between the diaphysis and the epiphysis. Often it can be called the epiphyseal disc or epiphyseal line depending on the age of the bone. When the child is still in its growth, uh, growing state, the epiphyseal plate will remain open, which means the diaphysis and the epiphysis are not touching. There is a, a, a band or a disc of cartilage in between those bones and as the child grows will be replaced with bone and eventually the diaphysis and the epiphysis will meet and fuse together. When that happens all that is remaining of the epiphyseal plate will be a thin line. The articular cartilage is the white material that's found on the ends of the bones so that the bones are not touching and then uh, it reduces the friction of the uh, at the joint where there can be some type of friction going on between the bones and it is made up of hyaline cartilage. Here is a comparison of the two the epiphyseal plate at the top notice that there is a big gap in between and then epiphyseal line where it is a bone. The epiphyseal plate is made up of hyaline cartilage whereas the epiphyseal line it is made up of it has been replaced with bone so you will see a line of bone so when you compare the x-ray the epiphyseal plate will be a dark line separated between the epiphysis and the diaphysis the epiphyseal line on the other hand will have a wide appearance because it is made up of bone in x-ray the darker the the darker the bone the more black or gray it means that there is less bone mass and as the gets wider, then there is more, more bone. And so for a reason why it's wider in color is because now the epiphyseal plate has closed and it becomes has this the thin line. And that means at this state, this person has stopped growing. This person is still in its growing, uh, growing phase. Recall from the last unit that one of the membranes was called the serous membrane. And serous membrane is a membrane, a covering, that covers any organs that are not exposed to the outside and technically bone is one of those organs that are not connected to the outside. So serous membrane, remember, have those double layers called the visceral layer and the parietal layer. So the visceral layer is actually the outermost layer of the organ. In this case, when we're talking about the bone, it is called periosteum. The prefix peri means around, and osteum refers to the bone. The periosteum is made up of a very thick fibrous connective tissue, which is really, really strong, which gives it a lot of strength to the bone. What allows the periosteum to the st stick to the actual bone tissue is called the Sharpie's fibers that you can see like the um, spider web looking thing. Because Sharpie's fiber is very, very strong, you, it is not it, pretty much impossible to tear away the periosteum from the bone. You would actually probably break away the bone before the periosteum will actually come off the bone. The space within the diaphysis is called the medullary cavity. It is not an empty space. It is fit, filled with a yellow marrow. Remember that one of the functions of the bone is for storage, and one of those material that it stores is fat in the form of yellow marrow. There are numerous arteries and blood vessels 
in the bone that allows it for to provide nutrients to the bone. Two types of bone make up the long bone. One type is called the compact bone. They make up the outer portion of long bones. It's what gives it its strength. Notice that it is highly packed with bone tissue. The other type of bone is called the spongy bone and is found at the ends of the bones and a little bit portion of the inside bone. Spongy bone, again, remember, forms the inside portion of the bone or the epiphysis. And unlike the compact bone, which is full of bone and there is not much space inside it, spongy bone is made up of needle-like a pattern of bone called the trabeculae, and there are spaces within the bone. And the spaces within the bone is made up of something called red marrow. Red marrow is basically red blood cells, and that's where red blood cells are formed. Okay, so again, here's a picture of a bone. The outer layer is made up of compact bone, and inside the bone is cancellous bone is another name for spongy bone, and this is what I was talking about, the trabeculae. It is the intricate form of the framework of the bone with the spaces inside it. It's called the trabeculae. Now, those spaces are filled with red bone marrow and blood vessels, and remember one of the functions of bone is hematopoiesis, which means that it makes blood, red blood cells. The microscopic anatomy of long bone or bone is, remember, uh, you actually have to look it under the microscope. And it's specifically the compact bone you're looking at. And how you get this uh, picture is if you take a portion of compact bone, grind it up into powder, and then you put it on a slide and look at it, and this is what you will see. Remember uh, from last unit, an osteon is one big concentric circle is an osteon which is a unit of bone. In the center of that is the central canal or the haversian canal or sometimes called the osteonic canal. They're all meaning the central portion of the osteon and it is filled with the major blood vessels and nerves. Running perpendicular to the central canal or the haversian canal or the uh, osteonic canal is the Volkmann's or perforating canal. Again, look at how it runs perpendicular. Here's your central or the osteonic canal. And here's the perforating canal running perpendicular. So the function of the Volkmann's canal is to connect central canals together. So each osteon has a blood vessel supplying it. And then the, the Volkmann's canal their job is to connect all of the blood vessels of the osteons together. Lacunae is the space that the osteocyte or the bone cell sits in. Here is the bone cell, what it looks like, and then this dark spaces that you see, these are all your lacunae. And the osteocyte sits inside it. Lamellae is the rings, the layer of rings. So if you think of them like an onion, it is the individual peel of the onion is the lamellae. And this is where the osteocyte sits in, is where the lamellae is. Here is a picture. The space in the black is your lacunae, and then this yellow structure sitting inside it is the osteocyte. So a lot of times you can't separate the lacunae and the osteocyte because it becomes one huge mass of dark, dark area in the, in the osteon. Another structure of the bone is canaliculi. Canaliculi is the portions of the lacunae and they radiate away from the lacunae and there are tiny canals. That's what canaliculi means, little tiny canals. And they connect blood supply from one lacunae to another. Those are all in the purple are your canaliculi. Here you can see the tiny lines radiating from the osteocyte inside the lacunae. Those are your canaliculi. Here is an actual picture of an osteon. Again, here's your osteonic canal or central canal or haversian canal. And then you can see the rings are your lamellae, which are the layers. These big little tiny holes are your lacunae. 
and with inside it will be the osteocytes and the little tiny channels that are radiating from it are your canaliculi. 5.2 notes homework. Number one, name the two types of bone found in long bones and what roles do they play? Number two, how are central or osteonic canal and Volkmann's canal related? Number three, describe the locations of the osteocyte, lacunae, lamellae, and canaliculi.